Hey guys, what's good? It's Jordan. Welcome back. Hang on one second. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Thirsty. Take off. Welcome back to the channel. Um, so uh, I recently picked up a fluid head tripod. It was a newer, newer, however you pronounce that. Uh, it was the uh, NW2500 fluid head tripod. <clears throat> um, so I got it off Amazon. Um, it's a $110 fluid head. And uh, so if you're looking to get some solid, smooth footage, um, I think for about $110, it'll put you right in the ballpark of where you're trying to be at. Um, so the new ear at the tallest is 61 inches, and it comes up to about my shoulder. Um, when it's compacted down, it's about 28 inches short or tall. And I'm like six foot one, so just keep that into uh, perspective. It, uh, it goes, it's pretty tall. It's not bad, um, especially if you're tall or taller. It's a lot better than some of the other tripods. So it has a nice pan and tilt head, fluid head. Um, it's great for videos and photos, um, especially if you do like panoramic photos. Um, it's a pretty smooth pan. Uh, as far as the tilt goes, that's something to kind of be desired. Um, <clears throat> it's got a quick release plate and it comes with two different size mounting bolts. Um, so one's a quarter 20 and the other one is a three eighths inch. Um, and then there's a little hideaway underneath the base of the tripod head where uh, you can store the quick release bolts that you're not using. So that's a pretty nice little feature. Um, I don't really know if a lot of other tripod manufacturers do stuff like that, but I think it's pretty nice that uh, you can easily just put one under the tripod into the little screw hole and then not have to worry about it. And when you need it, you just pop it back out. Uh, the quick release plate is pretty convenient. Um, I think if you have other products with the same size quick release plate, you could easily go from tripod to a gimbal or a steady cam without any problems. Um, my steady cam, I can't really do that because the uh, quick release plate that's on it is actually kind of thin. So for the quick release plate though, I will say this much, um, where they have the locking where they have the locking knob or the locking nut, whatever you want to call it, um, it kind of gets in the way. I mean, I shoot on a DSLR. So with a DSLR, the body's a little bit wider than probably like a mirrorless would be. Um, so I kind of have to fidget with it a little bit before I put it back on because I can't fully unloosen it and then put it back on and fully tighten it because the handle grip for where the DSLR sits on the tripod actually kind of gets in the way of the, the locking knob. Um, so keep that in consideration. Um, <clears throat> so the body itself is constructed of a uh, pretty solid aluminum. Um, the only thing I don't like about it, which only time will tell, is the clips on the legs um, when you're extending them. I mean, they're made out of plastic, although I will say that it's a pretty solid hard plastic. So. Only time will tell. We'll see exactly how uh, how well it does in the uh, near future. I'll probably do an update on this at six months or a year. Um, if you guys do see this and you ever wanted to know if it uh, is still going, we'll, uh, we'll do an update on this. Um, so another thing too, which kind of sucks, is the tilt and the pan don't have any sort of gear for tension. Um, so basically when you get it out of the box, what you get for the tension on the tilt and the pan is basically what you get. Um, as far as I can tell, I haven't really used a lot of 
uh, fluid had tried pods before, but this one seems pretty sturdy um, and it seems pretty good. Uh, tilting forward, you know, so like if, let's say your camera's here and you're tilting forward, it springs back up really quick. Um, so that's something that you probably want to keep in mind. And then when you're tilting up, it actually kind of tends to stop and then you basically have to bring it back to level, um, which is kind of a pain. I think if you're trying to get some cool shots that you have to kind of work a little extra hard to get what you're working for. Um, the whole construction, like I said, is made out of aluminum. It's probably not the lightest weight tripod, um, but it's pretty sturdy. Um, I have a little cheap on tripod that I got from Walmart. It was like 15 or 20 bucks. Um, compared to that thing, this is a beast. Um, so it also has stainless steel spiked feet and rubber attachments. Um, so if you're shooting out in the, you know, if you're shooting out in grass or dirt, um, you can take the rubber feet off and you have a nice stainless steel spikes. So the tilt arm can be moved to either side uh, for either left-handed or right-handed shooters. And that also offers a nice quick release knob so you can take it on and off, um, especially when you're trying to store it or put it away. Um, you just crank the thing open, move your tilt arm, crank it down, and then you're good to go. Um, there's a bubble level that helps basically get you back on track and level to where you need to be. So if you're shooting on some uneven ground, uh, the bubble level definitely does help, um, especially because the tripod sits on a ball head. So basically you just gotta undo the ball head mount, put you back where you need to on the bubble level and then crank the ball head um, tensioning nut back on and then you're good to go. There's also two, so when you're going to pack the tripod up, there's a nice little clip on the bottom that basically keeps all the feet and everything together. Um, it basically just snaps on and then when you need to undo it, it just basically there's a little string, you just pull it and it snaps off. Um, and then you can go ahead and uh, fold out your tripod that way. And then one other thing too that I wish you were able to do is uh, disconnect the middle spreader. Um, to get kind of like lower shots. So like I said, uh, the shortest that it stands is 20 inches when it's, um, when the legs and everything are fully closed. Uh, sometimes kind of leading you to wanting to get a little bit lower than that. So like I said, I kind of wish uh, um, you could take the disconnect off. I don't know if you'd want to do it all the time, um, especially with everything kind of on that thing being plastic. But uh, I guess if you were in a pinch and you had a Phillips head screwdriver, then you could probably do that. So that's basically it for the New Year NW2500. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, if you have this, let me know what you think. If, uh, if you don't have this and you're thinking about picking it up, um, feel free to ask me some questions. I always try to answer them as best as I can. If you go into the About Me page on my YouTube, you can also find some links to my Instagram, my business Facebook, my Twitter. Um, and even on my LinkedIn too. So uh, feel free to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. And uh, if you guys are always interested, you can always subscribe. Uh, I'm always trying to put out new content for you guys. So I'm Jordan, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.